Let's configure port isolation in Microtik. In this video, port isolation in Microtik, from one of our previous videos, we have configured bridge split horizon in Microtik, wherein we are able to divide clients in the same broadcast domain so that they won't be able to communicate without the use of other features like VLAN, but we have noticed that one of the effects of bridge split horizon is that the hardware offloading will be turned off. Thus, we won't be able to achieve the optimal performance. In this tutorial, we will make use of one of the switch chip feature in Microtik, which is port isolation, to achieve practically the same scenarios without hopefully sacrificing hardware offloading. This tutorial covers the following, what is port isolation, configure port isolation, and verify the results. From the official Microtik documentation, so port isolation provides the possibility to divide or isolate certain parts of your network. This might be useful when we need to make sure that certain devices cannot access other devices. This can be done by isolating switch ports. Switch port isolation is available on all switch chips since router OS version 6.43. For our first scenario in our port isolation demonstration, we will have a Microtik CRS wherein its Ether1 is connected to the internet while its Ether2 to Ether5 are connected to client devices. Client 1 and client 2 will form as group number 1. Client 3 and client 4 will form group number 2. So the condition will be a client cannot access other clients on another group. But clients should still be able to access the internet. So for our demonstration, so for our CRS, so we have CRS 326 24G 2S Plus. For our client 1, so we have HAP Mini RB931 to ND, so PC number 1. For our client 2, so it will be a HAP Light RB941 to ND. So for our client 3 and client 4, so we have a pair of HAP AC Light. Let's check first our client. So for PC number 1. So the IP address is 192.168.1.10 on Ether1. So Ether1 connected to Ether2 to the CRS. So how about PC number 2 or client number 2? So IP address, so that will be 192.168.1.20 on Ether1. So Ether1 connected to Ether3 of the CRS. So next, let's check the PC3. So let's click connect and maximize a bit. IP address will be 192.168.1.30. So Ether1 connected to Ether4. And finally, for our PC number 4 or client 4, so IP address will be 192.168.1.40, which is on Ether1 interface connected to Ether5. So now we are connected to our Microtik CRS and let's commence our Microtik port isolation configuration. So in order to do that, so we need to bridge Ether1 down to Ether5. So Ether1, Ether2, Ether3, Ether4, Ether5. So we need to create a bridge interface. So don't mind this bridge that is already created. So we will add a bridge, a new bridge. So let's accept the default settings. So bridge 1, we are fine with it. 
So click OK. Next, we need to go to the Ports tab and add the Ether1 to Ether5 to the newly created bridge interface, which is Bridge1. Again, don't mind the ports that are added to another bridge. So click the plus sign, Ether1. So connect to Bridge1 or assign to Bridge1. So Ether1 is done. So Ether2 to Bridge1. Again, the hardware offload or all of the settings are remained unchanged. So we will stick with the default. So apply OK. So we now have Ether 1 and 2. So Ether 3 to bridge number 1. Hardware offload is checked. Apply OK. Next is Ether 4, bridge 1. OK. Then finally Ether 5 to bridge number 1. So apply OK. So Ether 1 to Ether 5 are added and they have the H flag for the hardware offload. Let's verify if our initial bridge configuration is working. So we are at PC1 with the IP address of 192.168.1.10. So let's try to reach the other PC, for example, 192.168.1.40 on the other side. Again, we haven't configured port isolation. So by behavior, we should be able to reach client 4. And yes, we are able to reach client 4. One last time, let's test client 3. And yes, we are able to reach client 3. So while we are here in our client device, so let's check if we are able to reach internet addresses. So for example, quadruple 8 and yes. And quadruple 9 is also pingable. So again, this video, we are not configuring the horizon value here. So in order to achieve this scenario. But instead, we will go to switch menu and go to the port isolation tab. And we will configure here to achieve what we want on this scenario number one. So let's start our port isolation configuration. So let's begin on Ether2. So Ether2 needs to communicate to Ether3 and Ether1. So we will configure forwarding override and forward it to Ether1 and also allow forwarding to Ether3. Click apply, click OK. So for Ether 3, we need to allow communication to Ether 2 as well as to Ether 1. So for Ether 3, forwarding override will be checked. Forward to Ether 1 and also to Ether 2. Click apply, click OK. So hopefully our group number 1 is done. So Ether2 needs to communicate to Ether3 and Ether1 to the internet. Ether3 needs to communicate to Ether2 and to the Ether1 for internet communication. So what's left is our group number 2. So for client 3 and client 4. So Ether4 so needs to communicate to Ether1 and Ether5. So for the forwarding override, we will add Ether1. And for the other port, which will be Ether5. So Ether4 needs to communicate to Ether1 and Ether5 only. Apply. OK. And lastly, for our Ether5, which our client 4 is connected. So it needs to communicate to Ether 1 for the internet and only to Ether 4 in the LAN side. So apply, OK. So as you notice, so our connection to the router or to the internet is Ether 1 is 
not configured with any forwarding override. So now let's do some verification or testing. So I am inside PC number one or client one. So it has an IP address of 192.168.1.10. So let us test first if our internet communication is still there. So let us type in a public IP. And yes, I am able to reach quadruple nine is still reachable. Now let us test the client to client communication. So again, the expected result will be client one or PC one should only be able to reach client two. So that will be 192.168.1.20. That will be client two IP address. And yes, so far it's okay. How about 1.20? 30 our client tree and yes there seems to be no response and for our client 4 will be 192.168.1.40 and yes there is no response so so far our group 1 is behaving fine based on our port isolation configuration but let's verify or confirm on another client which is on PC3. So tools ping. And let's see if internet addresses are still reachable. So quadruple 8 is still okay. How about quadruple 9? And yes, it's still okay. Now, how about client to client communication? So PC3 should only be able to communicate to client 4 or PC4. So that will be 192.168.1.40. So click start. And yes, the response is okay or normal. And let's now see if client 3 should be able to reach client 1. So no response to our client 1. and Finally, on our client 2, PC3 to client 2, client 3 to client 2, and there is no response. So the expected result seems to be achieved wherein Ether 2 or client 1 will only be able to communicate to the same group client or group member, which is client 2. And both of the clients are able to reach the internet. So as with group number two, we're in client three are is only able to reach client four and they are able to reach the internet. And with the port isolation, so the hardware offloading remains turned on. Also to emphasize, so again, we configure port isolation solely to achieve this scenario. And we didn't employ anything, for example, VLAN. So they remain to be VLAN 1. So we don't have any VLAN databases here. We don't have also any bridge VLAN filtering. So again, solely the solution is switch port isolation. So we have scenario number two, our final demonstration scenario. So unlike scenario number one, wherein we have groupings, so now a client cannot access other clients because they are on different groups. For example, group one, group two, group three, group four, and they are only able to reach the internet. So clients, all clients in this topology will be able to reach the internet. Only the client to client communication is not allowed so we are back here in our crs236 so this is our scenario number two topology so we're in each client is on its own group and client is only able to reach the internet but client is not allowed to communicate to other clients now it may seem that the topology is more complex than scenario number one but it isn't 
although there are many groupings, but the logic still remains in the switch port isolation, wherein, for example, Ether2 is now only allowed to communicate to Ether1. So we will just need to remove Ether3 here. So on Ether3, which is this one, it is only allowed to communicate to Ether1. So now you could see the pattern wherein every port only is allowed to be set on the forwarding override to Ether1 alone. So on Ether4, that will still be the case, only allowed to reach Ether1. And finally, on Ether5, is only allowed to reach Ether1. So the Ether3, Ether4, Ether5 are identical wherein they are only allowed to communicate to Ether1. Ether1 still remains to be the same with our scenario number one which is not configured. So now let's do some testing. We are here at PC number one. And as always, let's us check if our internet is still up. And yes, it's still up. So quadruple nine. And yes, it's still up. So how about client to client communication? So 1.20. To the client number two and there's no response client number three also no response and client four now no response so unlike on scenario number one where in pc1 is still able to reach client two now on scenario number two client one is not able to reach other clients but only going to the internet is allowed. Let's have one more testing now on PC number three before we wrap up this tutorial. So let's go to tools ping. So again, let us test our internet communication and it is still up. Okay. So how about client to client communication? So last time I am able to reach this because this is my group member, but this time on scenario number two, this won't be allowed. Okay, so client three will not be able to reach client four. How about client one? And yes, there seems to be no response. And client two, and yes, there is no reply. Again, I just want to emphasize that even if we change the switch port isolation to only Ether 1, our hardware offloading is still there on the bridge port members that are members of the bridge 1. So in this video, port isolation in Microtech, we are able to define what is port isolation. We have configured port isolation on a couple of scenarios. We are able to show that we are able to isolate or group clients, thus preventing client-to-client -client communication while maintaining internet communication. We are also able to show that hardware offloading on all the port members is still turned on. I hope you find this tutorial helpful and useful. Thank you for viewing.